To give context to why I'm doing this video, I haven't seen any videos out there explaining the world of Gravity Rush and how it came to be, so I decided to make one about it. This is going to be my attempt at explaining the lore behind the world of Gravity Rush. Keep in mind that most of what you're about to see is fan speculation and interpretation since the story behind the world is very vague. The story is also subject to change and as of the making of this video, my basis for explaining the world of this game is mostly from Gravity Rush 2. So without further delay, let's begin. The world of Gravity Rush is filled with beauty, eye-catching scenery and many memorable locations, but not much is known about the history of its world and how it all began. It wasn't until Gravity Rush 2 where it reveals the origin of the game's world through a side quest later in the game called Wandering Artistry. In this quest, the main protagonist, Kat, decides to pay a visit to Aki, who is a fortune teller at Pandora's Fortunes. She walks in her shop to see Aki talking to a client about a mysterious painting, which was created by an artist known as Saghasi, which we will talk about later. Aki then tasks Kat to help her client by finding the painting for him. She then hands an envelope to Kat containing the written fortune to begin her search. Eventually, Kat finds the painting on top of the arches of Venda Center's clock tower and takes a photo of it as proof of its existence. When she returns, to Aki's shop, Kat hands over the picture to the client and asks why these paintings were so important. He reveals that the painter Saghasi is a wandering artist that uses the town as his canvas and paints the world's deepest and darkest secrets, and whoever finds the paintings first owns it and can even sell it for a small fortune. At the end of the quest, it is implied that there are more paintings scattered throughout Hexville and Jirga Paralau for the player to collect and to find out the origins of the game's world. There are over 20 paintings to collect. There are 10 in Hexville and another 10 in Jirga Paralau. But before I dive deeper into this, who is the mysterious painter that is Saghasi? Like what was mentioned earlier, he's the wandering artist that made the 20 paintings for the player to collect, and his illustrations reveals the origins of the game's world. Sakasi never made a physical appearance in Gravity Rush 2, and there's not a lot of information regarding the painter. The only known fact about Sakasi is that his gender is male, because his followers refer to Sakasi as a he, and he may not even be human because his paintings are often found at odd and extremely hard to reach places, and is impossible for a regular person to reach. Also, despite Sakasi's artworks being regarded as paintings, his illustrations appear to be done by chalk rather than paint, which is odd. I have a theory that Sakasi may be one of the creators, since he is probably the only one who knows the deepest and darkest secrets of the game's world. Fans also speculated that Sakasi was able to obtain information about the world's origin through supernatural means, which further strengthens the theory that he's not human. Now that we talked about Sakasi, let's now dive deep into his paintings, which has a deep connection to the game's lore. The first batch of paintings that I'll explain are those found in Jirga Paralau. So the first picture is called Pulse, and the description of the first image reads, After an eternity had passed, a crimson sphere burst from its cocoon. Judging from the picture, the big circle in the middle is what the picture is referring to as the Crimson Sphere, and it seems to be bursting out of some sort of shell, and it also shows two cloud-like drawings above and below the sphere. I'm not really sure what these are, but I will assume that the cloud below could be the massive gravity storm, and the cloud above will eventually be the land of Ito. I'm also going to speculate that this sphere is actually the giant egg-like seed that is found at the bottom of the world pillar, which leads us to the second picture's description, which reads, The crimson orb stretched its roots and touched the world and came into being. As you can see, it looks like the crimson sphere has suddenly sprouted roots as soon as it made contact with the massive gravity storm below it, and this phenomenon resulted in the creation of the original life form, which is shown in the third picture, but before we move on, based on the first two pictures, this could mean that this is probably the origin of the world pillar and how it came into existence. And if we move on with the next picture, it reads, And so, the original life was given form. The third illustration is pretty straightforward, and due to the crimson sphere making contact with the gravity storm, resulted in creating the first nevi. However, it did not specify if the original life form is a light or a dark nevi, and based on the third picture, this shows us that the original life forms were not humans, but rather the nevi. Moving on with the fourth painting, it's called Coexistence, and it reads, The original life form split into two, creating a partner. 
So the fourth picture illustrates the original Nevi creating a partner by probably duplicating itself. It's unclear how the original Nevi was able to create a partner, so I'm just going to speculate that the Nevi is capable of asexual reproduction. Also, notice how the Nevi on the left is different from the right. The third image shows us the original Nevi is shaded in white, while in this image, the Nevi on the left does not share the same white shade that the original Nevi has, so this means that the one on the left is the duplicate. Could this also mean that this is the birth of the Dark Nevi? Or is it the other way around, since it's unclear which one is the Dark or the Light Nevi? The next picture is called Incubation, and it reads, Life continued to multiply and come together. In their cocoon, they dreamed of an unseen world. So the fifth picture is kind of confusing for me because I can't make out what it is, and the description is too vague for me to make any sense out of it, but from what I understood, it implies that life began inside the Crimson Sphere and the Nevi continue to reproduce and live in peace inside the sphere. And this unseen world that they are talking about is probably referring to the future locations outside the sphere like Hexville, Ito, Jergaparalao, the Dream World, the mining sites, and possibly many more. The next painting is called Light and it reads, Life sought light and rose into the sky. So this picture is also pretty straightforward. This is obviously referring to the light nevi that we will eventually see in the kingdom of Ito, which was Kat's original home. Moving on with the next painting called Sewing, it reads, Life flowered and multiplied. Again, the picture's description is also pretty straightforward, however, the illustration shown is, well, also too vague for me to make any sense out of it. I'm not sure if the dots in the picture are supposed to symbolize the Nevi traversing to different locations to reproduce, or if these dots are supposed to be some sort of weird constellation, but let's just speculate that this is probably the golden age of the Nevi where they flourished and lived prosperously. And if we move on to the eighth painting called Growth, it reads, The world was soon covered in life. So this is another straightforward piece of the game's lore. The picture now shows that the Nevi are now massive in number and is now spread across the world, but notice in the picture that the Nevi are contained in some sort of barrier, and it further implies that life began inside the Crimson Sphere. Moving on with the ninth painting called Discord, it reads, As life continued to divide, differences crept in. It wasn't clear what they meant by differences, because it can mean many things like differences in lifestyle, differences in ideology, differences in belief, or probably differences in their nature. Not a lot of information is given here, but one thing's for sure is that this period began the war between the Light and the Dark Nevi, and you can clearly see that the Nevi on the left seems to be striking down the Nevi on the right due to whatever differences they have. The next painting is called Darkness, and it reads, Evil began to appear and flow down into the low, heavy place. The picture depicts evil as a twisted looking skull, and this means that the Dark Nevi eventually went towards the bottom of the world pillar, which the picture is referring to as the low, heavy place. Also in Gravity Rush 2, it seems that the gravitational storms or anomalies can attract larger Dark Nevi, which explains why large Nevi like Nushi from Gravity Rush 1 resides at the bottom of the world pillar where massive gravity storms mostly take place. Now we move on with the paintings found in Hexville, which explains how humans came into existence. The first picture is called Emptiness, which reads, A dark cloud settled in the low place, smothering all of the light. So in the picture, the dark cloud that settled in the low place is probably the dark ocean that's below the world pillar, creating clouds of darkness that makes it impossible for light to go through, just like the village found below the world pillar in Gravity Rush 1. The next picture is called Conflict, and it reads, And so light was separated from dark, good from evil. This is the point of the conflict where the darkness becomes the ultimate evil, and it's also seen in the pictures that there is now a line to separate the light and the dark Nevi from each other. As for the next four pictures, it shows us how mankind was born and how the world pillar erupted from the Crimson Sphere, but first I'm going to read their descriptions before I explain. So the next one is called Wounds, which reads, The war that raged between the different forms gave power to the dark cloud. And in Friction, it reads, The long silence was followed by a new tremor that rolled through the world. And in Rift, it says, A symbol of the rift between light and dark was given form. And in Rebirth, it says, And from the rift between light and dark came a new life that would bridge the gap, mankind. 
So what this all means is that due to the war between light and dark, it caused great damage to the Crimson Sphere, and eventually the result of their conflict caused the World Pillar to burst out of the Crimson Sphere. This has caused the Nevi to be finally free from the Crimson Sphere's barrier and is now able to roam freely. Also, the eruption of the World Pillar led to the birth of mankind, which became the gap that bridged between good and evil. Thematically, this would make sense since humans are capable of doing both good and evil. So the next two paintings is called Harmony and Creation, and they read, The old life became the light and the dark, and continued to exist alongside mankind. The light rose, the dark sank, and in between, the world was born. So these two paintings are pretty upfront. The old life is referring to the light and dark Nevi existing alongside mankind. Some humans have ascended to the kingdom of Ito and coexisted with the light Nevi, while the dark Nevi chose to live below the world pillar and occasionally terrorize the humans living in between Ito and the dark ocean. Moving on with the next painting called The Abyss, it reads, The dark cloud settled into a slumber at the bottom of the world, where it has remained ever since. The dark cloud that this picture is referring to is probably the dark ocean below the world pillar that will come in 1000 years to destroy everything in its path someday. And if we move on to the final painting called Flowering, it reads, Thus, the world of light and life was given form from the muddled chaos. The last painting shows us the final picture of the world pillar alongside the kingdom of Ito at the top and the dark ocean at the bottom. Since this is the final painting, this concludes on how the world of Gravity Rush came to be. To give a brief summary of all this, the light and the dark Nevi were the first life forms to have ever existed, and eventually, their difference in nature sparked a war between good and evil. The consequences of their actions led to the destruction of the Crimson Sphere, which also gave existence to the World Pillar and gave birth to mankind, which made them the symbol of the rift between light and dark. Thus, that is how the world of Gravity Rush came to be. So yeah, that is my attempt at explaining the world of Gravity Rush through Sakasi's paintings. Again, these are just my speculations and there's a good chance that I may have misinterpreted some of the paintings. So let me know down below your interpretations of the paintings and in case I made too many errors, I will update this video if need be. Well, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching until the very end. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks again for watching and as always, this is Dre. And I'll see you when I see you. Take care.